Silver Dave here on this channel and on many other stacking channels. We talk about stacking to preserve wealth, whether it's silver, gold, platinum, rhodium, palladium. But um, most of the time we assume that, you know, there will be no specific catastrophic event that will happen to our precious metals that will cause the value to go to zero. And uh, in most cases, this is a reasonable assumption that uh, there are very few catastrophic uh, things that can happen that could cause, for example, the price of gold to go to zero. But they still exist. So let's find out what are some events that could cause gold to go to zero. Gold and silver and all the other precious metals are relatively safe. I mean, these items, they, um, they're they highly not reactive. They're unreactive. They are unlikely to decay. They don't react to uh, many things in nature and in the universe. And uh, they can be found as pure elements throughout the universe, right? Gold, silver, platinum, palladium. These are basically uh, very, very resilient uh, metals to change. But what are some of the things that could cause the value of what we hold, right, to go to zero? Well, first of all, you have to understand a bit of the context. Um, in the whole universe, gold, silver, uh, platinum, palladium, all of these metals, right, in that, uh, in that part of the periodic table, they are relatively rare to other uh, elements. Iron being one of the more common uh, elements out there. These are heavier elements, and they are rare, just to put it out there. So um, the event that even if we discover the whole universe, you know, we have everything in the universe, um, that they no longer become rare is uh, very unlikely relative to everything else out there. But let's just say on Earth today, what could cause uh, gold to go to zero? Well, one of the things, you know, that's really interesting is that uh, on Earth, we don't have so much gold, silver, and platinum and palladium. They are available, but they're not as abundant as in some parts of space, such as the asteroid belt and some meteors that float through space. So, if a meteor crashes onto Earth, and that meteor happens to contain a lot of gold, silver, platinum, and palladium, it could crash the whole gold and silver market, right? Your value of gold probably won't go down to zero, but it would be pretty low. Uh, but also, imagine if a meteor hits Earth... <laughs> Um, hopefully, uh, you don't die, um, because the last time it happened, it was a mass extinction event. So let's hope that we don't get hit by a meteor. But, you know, if we do go out into space and start mining gold and silver, will it render the price of gold and silver and, uh, and other precious metals to zero? Uh, I think the answer is no, because even if you go out there and mine it, you have to factor in fuel costs, the cost of extraction, right? You have to send um, the goods into space and you have to transport them to the place where they are sold. So that part will still make gold and silver maybe potentially quite ex expensive because you're mining in space. Um, there's no easy way to do it. There's no economically viable and cheap way to go and mine in space, at least not now. Maybe in the future, if we discover some new technology that makes uh, energy like infinite and we can send <laughs> spaceships zooming about in the asteroid belts and uh, mining gold and silver. But until then, it's a very unlikely scenario. What are some other events that could cause gold and silver to, to uh, go down to zero? Um, another event that could happen, and this could happen in the space of material science, is we discover... Uh, some alloy or some some sort of material not necessarily a metal that does what gold and silver do 
both as a monetary metal and industrial metal, and does it much better for much cheaper, and has none of the drawbacks. Now, that is hard. Typically, uh, a lot of the, I would say, for example, let's just say silver, right? Silver, I don't have any silver coins with me, but silver is one of the best conductors. There are better conductors, but usually these superconductors are both either difficult to manufacture or they require specific conditions to be superconducting. So in the most general purpose of environments, uh, it cannot really replace silver for most of its industrial applications. And not all of its industrial applications. What about gold? Uh, gold also has industrial applications. Um, I was talking to a uh, mechanical engineer and uh, also to a who works in the manufacturing, in the manufacturing sector. And um, he doesn't deal directly with gold, but he has colleagues who make uh, PCBs and circuit control boards. And they say that they use quite a lot of gold, like relatively um, for making electrical components and especially contact points and slot points and so on. So they do you buy gold. And right now they're, they're a bit worried about the rising price of gold and how it impact their margins because most, um, I would say electronics manufacturers, they have very low margins. So a shift in the change of price of gold could affect them and could affect like what they choose as their, uh, as a replacement for gold. Like they might choose, for example, silver as a replacement for contact points, which, which it performs less well than gold, but it is much cheaper. <laughs> um, so yeah. So if there is a new material, one of the potential materials that could replace both gold and silver is actually carbon. Uh, you can make carbon sort of electron contact points. It's still in development and it has some drawbacks. For example, carbon's brittle. So you could have the right structure, but a shock will cause the structure to break. And then uh, basically you have a broken part. While gold is malleable, so a shock will not cause it, it just cause it to bend and your electrical component will still function, the contact point will not necessarily break completely. So there's that. Um, so if we do find a new material that does exactly what gold does and is uh, as recognizable as gold, right? From the industrial application, it would bring the price down. And from a monetary perspective, um, it might. Uh, it might also bring the price down because all of a sudden, you know, there is no real, real, completely no real use for gold and silver. And then we have this new material that could, um, that could replace it, that is as recognizable and as fungible. Although the quantity, you know, uh, that could be another problem because gold is also limited, somewhat limited. You can't just quantitatively ease gold. So it could still retain its, uh, its value as a medium of exchange. Now we come to the final part, which I think is the most uh, probable risk for gold and silver, and that could bring the value, at least not the, uh, the real intrinsic value of gold and silver, um, but the traded value of gold to zero is if governments decide that you, know, you are no longer allowed to buy gold and silver and you would have uh, <laughs> you would have a market collapse at that point. But uh, if governments come decide to put enact a motion to confiscate gold and silver and to ban the use of gold and silver um, and the purchasing of gold and silver by individuals and by companies, uh, then that could cause the price of gold and silver on the market. I'm not saying that you know, on the black market or whatever other market, um, on the open market to go down to zero. They could fix it to say like, look, this thing has no value. It is completely go to transact. And uh, all governments agree, all agencies agree, and everybody agrees to not use it. That would go cause the price of gold to go to zero. How likely is that to happen? Um, I think it's, it's people have tr governments have tried it. Uh, there was a gold confiscation in the uh, I believe in the 30s, and uh, they fixed the price of gold at 32 dollars per I think per ounce of gold. And um, what happened was in the United States the price was fixed, but internationally the price was not always fixed. 
because uh, gold could trade at different prices in different countries. One of those countries, I believe, was Saudi Arabia. You can look this up, but um, initially the dollar was pegged to the price of gold at 32 to 1, but then the United States government started debasing the dollar, and actually also the price of gold was trading higher um, in other countries relative to the dollar. So relative to what it was trading inside the United States at the fixed rate. So when uh, I think it was in the, um, I think later on, in, I don't know the exact year, but I believe when there was a part, there was a time when Saudi Arabia was first accepting US dollars because it was paid in gold. Later on, there was a period where they required the US government to pay them in gold for oil instead of dollars because uh, the price of the real price of gold was actually um, much higher than actually the fixed rate and they could get more money basically uh, and they could actually get their money with gold in other countries. So unless every single country in the world agrees to actually abandon uh, gold completely and to ban it and take like active action to ban gold, um, the price of gold will not go to zero. But if they do, that is something that could bring the price of gold to down to zero. And the reason why I want to talk about this thing, about like why it's important for us to think about what could bring the price of gold to go down zero, is if you think hard and you try to find reasons why the price of gold could go down to zero, you have a hard time you know, uh, finding what could make the price go down to zero relative compared to, in fiat currency terms. Because um, in reality, uh, there is very, there's just almost a 0% chance that it can go down to zero. It can go very low, it can go lower than it is today, but to go down to zero would take some, um, some almost unthinkable, unimaginable event for it to go down to zero. <laughs> that, that's, yeah. So pretty much uh, realistically, prob realistically, it's a pretty safe bet. And that's why people have been saying, have the saying like it's good as gold because, uh, and it's survived 6,000 years as currency, you know? Um, and that's why it's the perfect item against, uh, well, I don't think it purely as a hedge against currencies, but I see it as a hedge against uh, human, um, human stupidity <laughs> and uh, incompetence. Because uh, basically, with most fiat currencies, their 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 value is determined by governance, pretty much governance and policies. That's what determines a fiat currency's value, right? You buy a, a valuable fiat currency is a fiat currency that has a stable government uh -huh, and um, and has a strong economy, a stable uh, a stable society, and um, is widely accepted by all, and that in the future promotes stable policies. Uh, a fiat currency that doesn't have value is one where the government is completely unstable, changes policies from one day to the next, and uh, cannot agree with itself on what to do next. And uh, that's why gold is a bet against human um human stupidity <laughs> that's how i see it as and basically humans behave when in groups tend to behave in stupid ways so it's a good bet against human stupidity that's why it has been held value and has existed past many civilizations and past many human achievements anyway so there was more of a less technical video it's uh it's a more philosophical video because you know uh, there really you can't really prove or disprove what i said um, other than looking back in history and say like, oh yeah, it's existed for 6,000 years, so it mu there must be very few reasons why it can go down to zero, and we still use it today. There were times when it was lower, there were times when it was relatively higher to other goods in the market, um, but overall it has maintained its value for throughout time. So I think, uh, you know, stacking gold, stacking silver, stacking any type of commodity in this current environment is a pretty good, you know, hedge against risk. Anyways, if you enjoyed the video, click the like button, subscribe. Thank you very much for watching. This is Dave. Dave out.